get us started, to get into the conversation, tell us a little bit who you are, what you do here at InvestCorp. Uh, Habib Abdurrahman, I'm Global Head of uh, Sustainability at InvestCorp. What I'm responsible for um, are three key things. One is climate transition planning. Okay. Uh, so how is the firm as a corporate affecting its responsibility to decarbonize towards uh, net zero by 2050 or sooner? And how are we also ensuring that our investments are, are doing the same, our portfolio companies, the right. properties in which we invest and so on and so forth? So that's the first thing. Okay. Uh, the second thing I'm responsible for is to ensure that our investing platforms are appropriately integrating sustainability considerations into the way they invest. Uh, and we can talk a little bit more about what yep. that actually means. It's a recent, uh, recent foray into this, uh, into this space, but we are looking to deploy uh, capital uh, into climate solutions, so I'm helping the firm develop product that can help us to, to deploy capital into, into climate solutions really across the globe. What is sustainability? There are people out there that hear the word, don't really know what it is, so if you can give it to us in layman's terms. Yeah. It's about meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their needs, to ensure that we are using the resources of the world in a manner that doesn't destroy the prospect of future generations to be able to use those resources as well. Okay, and, so and who decides those needs though, the future generation needs? That's a great question and I think, you know, the, the, the world community, uh, if I can put it like that, has set the Sustainable Development Goals. And the Sustainable okay. Development Goals are a series of 17 uh, goals whether it's about the climate, whether it's about decent work, whether it's about poverty, whether it's about a whole manner of things. And that's the guidelines. Those are the guidelines, okay. global guidelines for countries to aim towards. Where do we need to get to within the next decades to be able to ensure a more sustainable way of life as we go into the future? Okay. And so, so, and you know, companies and uh, entities all across the world have signed up to these goals and right. have committed to delivering them. But it's quite different. I mean, you can think about sustainability at that level, but if you then bring it down and bring it into the world of the investor, it can mean very different things. Well, that was going to be my next yeah. question to you, right? So as the global head of sustainability of InvestCorp, where is the link of sustainability and finance? And it's not something that you'd commonly link together, I would assume, well, to other people, you wouldn't link finance. So where is the link? How does that help you? Or how are you helping InvestCorp in your day to day with sustainability and investments? When companies are producing products and services, they're using natural resources yeah. across the world. And this is to any sector, right? Like this In any sector, right, whether okay. it's industry, whether it's manufacturing of some sort, okay. whether it's uh, professional services even to a certain degree, although the impact is slightly less, but right. it's across industries. What we've recognized, of course, is that externalities, the, the cost of doing business on the environment is not priced into the products and services that we sell to right. consumers. Of course. And so that needs to change if we are to ensure that we are using the resources of the world in a responsible manner. Well, in the world of finance, what we hear about a lot is this concept of double materiality. Essentially means what is the impact of your company on the external environment? Okay. And how are changes in the external environment impacting your ability to continue to do oh, business? Oh, I see. So it's both ways, basically. Exactly. Right, okay. And so when we think about sustainability and how it is incorporated or considered or applied into the world of finance, but more, more specifically as an investor, what we need to think about is, you know, what are those sustainability considerations, whether yeah. they're environmental in nature, whether they are, they are social in nature, or whether they're, they're broader? How are we considering the assessment of those factors yep. when we're deploying our capital. So for example, if we are looking at deploying capital into a real estate property or an office building, yep. um, we'd like to understand whether or not that office building is located in, a, in an area which is prone to flood risk, for example. Oh, I see. Okay. So as for example, and this is related to climate change. Yes. So as the climate changes, as temperatures heat up, we experience more extreme climate events, right. uh, the propensity of floods would also increase. And so we need to ensure that we're investing in locations where um, we are you know, appropriately mitigating any risk associated with flooding. You know, that's so interesting. Just on that one small example, something that I, I and I'm sure others wouldn't really think about, right? When you're looking at real estate property, to me, you'd look at a factor of other stuff. But it's, it's, it's kind of interesting to hear the link. But I, I guess that kind of segues me into the next part is, then in 
the role today and with what you've done at InvestCorp, can you give me a few sustainability um, initiatives that we've launched or done? Yeah, absolutely. And let me just uh, perhaps begin with something we've announced today, which is essentially a coalition, a partnership, a collaboration with the COP28 Presidents' Innovate for Climate Tech Coalition. Okay. Uh, so we joined this coalition as an investment partner. And what the aim of this coalition really is to support the development and deployment of climate technologies across the globe, but particularly into the global south. And we view the, the region, particularly the United Arab Emirates, but also broadly, yeah. more broadly as that gateway to the global south. And so what does that mean as an yeah. investment partner? We understand that climate change is having devastating impacts yes. really across the world. Yeah. And it's hitting closer to home. Yeah, right? much more so than before. Much more so than before. And I think, you know, if you think about, um, you know, the impact on rich countries, more developed countries, it, you know, we're, we're feeling it more and more, but we also have the, the, the you know, the, the, the financing to be able to protect us against some of the risks that we face. But the impact, the impacts of climate change in, uh, is, is far greater um, in, in developing economies where they don't have the uh, resources to be right. able to protect against uh, some of the drastic changes that we're seeing across the globe. Uh, and you know, what, one of the ways of dealing with that problem is to be able to invest in technologies uh, at a stage where they need to be scaled rapidly. Okay. When you scale a technology, you're able to bring price points down. Well, that's the that's the intention. That's what we try to do. And once you're able to bring those price points down, they then become more accessible and affordable to yeah. many more people across right. the world. And then more broadly for InvestCorp as an organization? Absolutely. So I'll give you two examples. One uh, around uh, what we're doing as a firm. Yeah. Uh, and two, what we're doing in our portfolio companies as okay. well. Uh, because those two go hand in hand. I think we need to, when we talk about decarbonization, when we talk about net zero as an investor, it means getting to net zero operationally, so yes. all of our corporate operations, but it also means getting to net zero and helping the, our investments, the companies in which we invest, yeah. to decarbonize over a, a, you know, over a timeline that makes sense for them. Um, because you know there are core differences. Some businesses need to go faster because of the impact they're having. And, yep. It, you know, this is about you know what, what, what is typically termed a fair share. But if I take um, uh, Investcorp in particular to start with, I mean, I think people oftentimes have recently actually been telling me, if you want to lose weight, you've got to weigh yourself uh, to understand what you, <laughs> where you're at yeah. and then set yourself a goal and then work towards putting a plan in place to achieve that goal. Right. And similarly with carbon emissions, we're seeing considerable regulatory tailwinds around the requirement for companies to disclose publicly yep. uh, what their emissions are. I really like that example, by the way, I think everybody can relate to it, right? So, Absolutely. Yeah, so I think that's a fantastic <laughs> way of looking at it, okay. And, and so we need to weigh ourselves in terms yes. of, you know, the corporates need to weigh themselves into with respect to how much energy they're consuming, whether or not that energy is, uh, you know, carbon intensive, how much of the, the energy mix that they're using is renewable? Can we move towards more renewable power? Okay. And then translate all of that information into how does that then translate into emissions? Right. Uh, it's not an easy thing to do. It's a, it can become a very complicated process. Uh, there are lots of parties involved. There's a lot of data flowing about. Mm. And so you need some level of technology or automation to be able to gather all of this data, preferably in real time, okay. to be able to um, not only um, understand what your emissions are as you're going along, but to be actively being able to intervene right. to be then reduce those emissions and ensure that we remain on that path. Uh, and so we've deployed um, you know, carbon accounting and management software really across all of our operations now. Um, we are streamlining the processes that are required, okay. uh, and then we can do that more regularly over time. And so we're really excited about that. That's really the first step. Right. to to uh, understanding where and we are. looking at ourselves, basically. Looking at ourselves when we think about business travel is whether or not we need to travel at all. And if we do, then are, is, are there more sustainable modes of transport? Could we be using a train instead of a car, for example, if it's intercity? Yeah. Um, could we be uh, offsetting the emissions that are generated through, um, you know, using a plane? Uh, using you know sustainable aviation fuel credits and things of that sort. So it's all things that we're exploring okay, in order to help us decarbonize our own 
operations. Okay. Secondly, when we think about what we're doing with our portfolio companies, uh, and let me just you know take the climate example again here, but we are doing broader things as well. Our portfolio companies operate in numerous sectors across industries. The way they decarbonize and the needs that the particular needs that they have are going to be different. Yes. Uh, but I think at the same time, they all broadly need to get on the same page in the sense that they need to understand what their emissions are. Right. And they do that in a similar way to which to what we've done, as in okay, let's try and implement systems and processes and good governance structures that allow you to capture that data in an efficient fashion and then to be able to determine what you need to do and what are the quick wins and what are the longer term strategic changes that need to be made. Okay. So that's on the, um, I'd say, the, the portfolio side. My final question to you is people listening now, people that are in sustainability, people that are not, companies that don't have the size and structure of InvestCorp, where do they start, right? Someone goes, okay, I want to get into this, but it, I don't understand, it's too big for me. What is sort of the like foundation base level advice that you would give? I start off on the premise that we all have a common objective, but we have differentiated responsibilities. Right. So there are, of course, going to be certain entities, companies, people even, yeah. uh, doing more yes. than Yes, there's others. always someone doing Absolutely. more. Absolutely. And, and that's, you know, almost systemically programmed because this is about portfolio balancing. Yes. This is about the fair share. This is about if you can do more, you should do more. Right. Uh, and so when we think about companies across the, the world, there are of course large companies that can put in place deep programs that completely uh, allow them to retool the way, that, the way they manufacture products and services. And then there are other companies that are that, you know, smaller in nature, mum and pup shops. If you think about the the products and services that small businesses are offering, how can they think about their own supply chain? Are they sourcing sustainable goods in, uh, uh, in order to you know be, then be able to produce the products and services that they deliver to their customers? We've talked about what's happening in Vescorp now, what people can do now. What do you see for the future, right? The future in sustainability in the world today. Where do you think we'll be in 5, 10, 15, 2050 net zero emissions goal? You know, I'd love to be able to say, look, this is where we're going to be yeah. in five years and this is where we're going to be in 10 years. But with so much changing so rapidly, it's very difficult to be able to predict with any level of certainty as to where we're going to be. But what I can say is that over the past year, we've seen um, a real ballooning of the amount of funding and financing going Not into the, the development of renewable energy. Today, for every dollar spent on conventional energy, we're spending $1.7 on renewable energy. Oh, wow. We want to triple that. That's actually one of the objectives of the COP28 uh, um, presidency, to triple the amount of uh, renewable energy that is produced okay. across the world. But I think it's important to also look at, you know, at major human needs, yeah. food, shelter, travel. Day-to-day -day right? basics. Absolutely. How can you decarbonize how we grow food and what we eat and how we recycle? Yeah. How can we decarbonize our, you know, the way we travel to work? How can we create integrated systems of transport? Right. Uh, where in a future economy where there are two billion additional people on the planet, those people can be fed appropriately and they can travel to where they need to be in as efficient and sustainable manner as possible. I think that's achievable. I think we can get there uh, quicker than you know the naysayers will have it. Um, and I'm confident that um, InvestCorp is really stepping up to deploy capital into each of these areas to be right. able to scale those solutions and ensure that you know these major human needs are met in a circular fashion as possible. Well, Habib, I think that that is a very positive way to end. I hope we prove the naysayers wrong. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me.